Hi students, this is chapter 5, lesson 5, and the topic of this lesson, what you should be able to do at the end of it is, you should be able to compare and order rational numbers. Uh, remember that a rational number from the previous lesson is any number that can be written as a fraction. Uh, it's most numbers that you know of. Um, <clears throat> our reference, or what we're always going to keep in the back of our mind as we work through examples today, is this idea of a number line And we talked about this in previous lessons. Everything that way on the number line is greater Everything that direction is greater and everything this direction is less So as we are comparing rational numbers if one is here and the other is here, this one's greater. If they're both negative and they're over here somewhere, we think about where they go on the number line, this one is greater. Whatever is more that direction is greater. And whatever is that more that direction is less. <clears throat> Again, negative numbers count in this direction. Positive numbers count in that direction. So this is what we're going to keep in the back of our mind. Uh, and also use this as we work through some examples. First example, and we're going to talk about a lot of strategies today in this lesson. You can choose which strategy you'd like to, to use or uh, mix them up, use a combination of strategies. First example we're going to look at. Compare 1.8 compared to 1. 1.8. Four, nine, nine. What inequality works? Is it this inequality or that inequality? Is it greater than or is it less than? So one strategy, when you have decimals like this, uh, this decimal only has one place value to the right. This one has three. So one strategy you can use is make the decimals the same place value. I'm going to write that. Make make the decimals the same place value. What I mean by that is this one has one place value, this one has three. So let's change it. 1.8, well, let's make that have three place values, the same as that one. What do I put in there for those blanks? We can put in zeros. And over here, we've got 1.499. What's greater, 1.800 or 1.499? Well, many of you know that just seeing this place value greater than this one, you know that this is greater. But what a lot of confuses a lot of kids is they see this and they think, oh, that's 499? Well, that's bigger than 8. So they mistakenly pick that one. Well, if you make them the same length, chances are you're not going to make that mistake. This is 1.800 after the decimal, 1.499 after the decimal. The inequality that works is greater than. So that's one strategy. Make the decimals the same place value. Uh, let's look at negative 5 eighths compared to negative 5 sixteenths. So notice these are both negative. They're both going to be on this side of 0. And one strategy, one strategy is 
uh, change to common denominators. Right now, you have 8 and you have 16. Change so they're the same. That's one, that's a, strat a good strategy. Negative 5 eighths compared to negative 5 sixteenths. Well, 8 and 16 are not the same denominator. What can we do to make them the same? Hopefully you're thinking this 8, if we multiply it by 2, we will have the same denominator. So I'm going to put times 2 times 2, and that would give us negative 10 sixteenths. So now I've got negative 10 sixteenths compared to negative 5 sixteenths. And then I, I'm going to have to think about where are these on this number line. Negative 10 sixteenths would be out here somewhere. Negative 5 sixteenths is not as negative. It's going to be right here. So negative 5 sixteenths is greater than negative 10 sixteenths. This is more great. It's more, it's greater, but it's in that direction, which means it's less in comparison to negative 5 sixteenths. So when you're comparing two negatives, really think about where they're where they go on the number line. If you were to graph it, whatever is that way is greater. So this one, the comparison would be less than. Negative 10 sixteenths or negative 5 eighths is less than negative 5 sixteenths. So kind of a tricky idea. Uh, another strategy other than changing to common denominators, another strategy you could use for this is divide fractions into Divide fractions into decimals. Talked a lot about how to do that. Numerator divided by denominator. So negative 5 eighths. Type in your calculator. 5 divided by 8. See what you come up with. I'll just write it right here. 5 divided by 8. That is going to turn into 0. Point 6, 2, 5, but it is negative because of this negative. 5 divided by 8 gives you that, and it's negative, so I'm making it negative. 5 sixteenths, negative 5 sixteenths, negative 5 sixteenths. I'm going to type in my calculator, or you're going to type it. 5 divided by 16, what do you get on your calculator? You get 0 0.3125, but again, that's negative. So we've got 0 0.625 negative compared to negative 0 0.3125. I'm going to go back to this strategy now. This has four places and a combined strategies. Four places, this one only has three. Let's add one. So now I've got a zero. Now look at these. This is a greater amount. If I cover up the negative, this is greater than this amount. But think about what that means in the negative direction. Negative 0.6250 might go out to here. Negative 0 0.3125 is not going to go out as far, maybe about right there. So this value is greater than this value. The symbol that works here is again less than. Negative 5, and I'm going to go back to our originals, <coughs> original amount. Negative 5 eighths is less than negative 5 sixteenths. <coughs> So let's do some highlighting. <clears throat> Again, 
We've talked about these strategies before in other previous lessons. Common denominator means change your fractions so they have the same denominator. But remember, always go back to a number line and think about, okay, well, where would I place the value on the number line? Whatever is that way is more, is greater. <clears throat> um, another strategy, or highlighting this one, um, dividing fractions into decimals. That's another real common strategy. And we also combined uh, this idea into this example, adding, making the decimals the same place value. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Sometimes you're going to be comparing a fraction and a decimal together. For example, maybe you're trying to compare 7 eighths compared to 0 0.9. So, uh, I'll show one example, one strategy, and I'll talk about another one. Um, divide, if, divide, I could use this one. Divide fraction into decimal. So, seven eighths. To change that into a decimal, I'd type in my calculator 7 divided by 8, and I would get 0 0.875 and 0 0.9 stays 0 0.9. Now I'm going to go back to that strategy again. 1, 2, 3, place value to the right of the decimal, 1, 2, 3. I would fill in with nines, or I mean, sorry, after the nine, I would fill in with zeros. And now these are both positive. So 0 0.875 maybe goes out to here. <clears throat> 0 0.900 is going to be a little bit more. It's more that direction. So this is a greater amount. The symbol that works here is less than. If I'm reading across from left to right, 7 eighths is less than 0 0.9. Okay, so I told you I would <clears throat> show you a strategy and talk about another one. Uh, divide fraction into decimal is always one strategy. Uh, Another strategy, I'm not going to write this down, but some of you think back to when we changed decimals into fractions. Say this fraction with meaning, with place value. Zero and, this is the tenths, so this one I would say zero and nine tenths. If I were to write this as a fraction, I would write it as nine tenths. Then, if I am trying to compare it to 7 eighths and I've got 9 tenths, I could then use common denominator strategy. I've got 8 as a denominator here, 10 as a denominator there. I could change to uh, a common denominator after I have them both in fractions. So, like I said at the beginning, a lot of these strategies can be mixed together and you can combine uh, combine different elements of each. Pretty much what, you, you, what you're usually shooting for though is to make everything decimals or get everything into fractions and then go from there. That's usually the best way to approach these. Um, last example. Actually before this example, here is chapter 5, lesson 5 puzzle. It is this. What common phrase does that puzzle represent. If you know it, hopefully your name gets drawn tomorrow and you'll have a chance to win. Okay, last example. Order <clears throat> from 
least to greatest. The following amounts, negative 1.4, <clears throat> negative one and three fifths and negative one and three tenths. So I've got three different values. They're all negative and I am going to divide these into decimals. These fractions, the three fifths and the three tenths, I'm going to divide on my calculator and change those into, de into decimals. Um, that is one strategy. I could change this one into a fraction uh, and get them all fractions and get common denominators. Again, you get to decide which one you like best. I'm going to use uh, divide fractions into decimals as my strategy. That one's already a decimal. I don't have to do anything with it. Negative 1.4. Type in your calculator. 3 divided by 5. 3 divided by 5 is going to give you 0.6. But we have a 1 in front of that. So 3 divided by 5 or 3 divided by 5 gives you 0.6. But I have a, a, a 1 in front of that, and so that's going to turn into 1.6, and it's negative. We also have uh, negative 1 and 3 tenths. You can type in your calculator, or just know because this one is tenths, that that would be... 3 divided by 10 is going to be 0 0.3, but again we have negative 1 in front of that, so negative 1 and 3 tenths is negative 1.3. And we also had negative 1.4. So now we have all three of the amounts we're comparing changed into decimals. Negative 1.4, negative 1.6, and negative 1.3. Imagine where those would be on a number line. The one that's furthest that way, the smallest, is this one. Negative 1.6. The next smallest, or moving this way, would be negative 1.4, and the one closest to zero would be negative 1.3. So as I put them on the number line, smallest, in the middle, and this one would be the greatest. So if I'm going from least to greatest, the smallest amount on a number line would be this one. It would be most that way, and that started as negative one and three fifths. I'm going back to what it started as. The one in the middle would be negative 1.4. And finally, the one that's most that direction, if I put all the amounts on a number line, would be negative 1 and 3 tenths. So this would be my answer for ordering these from least to greatest. And again, I used the strategy of I divided them all into decimals. Okay, that about does it for lesson five. Really remember this idea up here. Think about where would these go on a number line, and whichever one is that direction is greater, this direction is less. So that is really key, is that you are putting them on a number line, either a real number line, sketch it out, or really picture that number line in your mind and place the values where they would belong. Okay, that does it for Chapter 5, Lesson 5. I'll see you again soon for Lesson 6.